right, and action. <clears throat> okay, so when I was a kid, I watched a lot of movies growing up in Pennsylvania, and uh, I got to the point where I rewatched the same movie over and over again sometimes. And uh, we had DVDs, um, put them in the computer sometimes, or I don't know, what was it, PS3? But anyway, I'd kind of like look around the menu, and one day I found voiceover commentary. I was like, what's this? And that's then I started getting to watching movies with voiceover commentaries. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna make a voiceover commentary of the video I just created. Give you a little insight to what I was thinking, what I regret, what I should have done, what, what, I don't know, I, I, you basically get it. All right. Uh, so we're gonna turn the volume on. Uh-oh, bad start already. Turn the volume on. How about Bitcoin ordinals exist? I wanna see how much interest there is when we put this on a marketplace. Um, oh, so this is, this whole video is divided into three sections. I got this section promoting my grandfather, my great aunt, and my grandfather's art. And wait, let me just see, is this recording? Did it stop recording? Yeah, it stopped recording. Oh, I gotta redo this. Okay, uh, I gotta read, had to redo that. This is, uh, back when I was a kid, I would watch uh, a lot of movies, DVDs, my dad had a collection of DVDs, and it got to the point where I would, would watch them over and over again, and then i get bored, and I looked through the menu, and one day I found voiceover commentary. And then I started watching a lot of movies with the voiceover commentary, and it got into it. I was, so if you ever have a DVD, an old DVD, check out a, a voiceover commentary. You, see, you get to hear the actors, the director, talk about what they were thinking, what they were doing. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right here. What I was thinking, what I was doing, uh, what I regret. Um, and uh, yeah, this is actually a second take because when I went to full screen, uh, I, uh, it stopped recording. I'm using the Microsoft recorder. I know there's rec recording software, but I'm using my iPhone as a mic and the con app, uh, the Apple on the keyboard, or I mean the Windows G, the Xbox Live recording. Um, the Apple iPhone as a mic, I got that from Stand Up Maths. Uh, Matt from Stand Up Maths. It's a good idea great audio but I'll probably if I start making more videos I get I'll look more into better ways to record uh, so the most I can do is deer in the mode it's still recording um, I think that's it all right so I'll start this thing all right all right now that Bitcoin now that Bitcoin orders exist, exist yeah, I don't, I don't like the idea. How much interest interest now that Bitcoin order we put this, put this on, on marketplace, a marketplace. Oh, oh yeah, wait. Um, I, had a, I, had a... I did this in the first day too. Okay, so there's three parts to this video. There's me promoting my grand, my grandfather, my great aunts, and my grandfather's art, and that's actually should have been the focus because that's the whole point. I'm trying to promote this is great art, and I'm trying to get this on Bitcoin only once, and maybe I might or might not do that. Who knows? There's a lot of regulations going on. I may have missed completely the NFT wave because I missed it first time. And uh, so maybe just overthinking it. But the whole point I wanted to make this video was just to promote this art and see how much views and maybe even funding I get so I could just throw this on Bitcoin without worrying, taking a risk of putting my own money on uh, if it doesn't sell for what I think it's worth. Um, so. Yeah, this is the first part and initially i had how many takes like 40 takes 
I mean, at first I made a video of just showing me in the living room and showing the prints my grandfather had. Maybe I was gonna take some of these greeting cards out. And that video just alone was like eight minutes long. And then I would have gone to the second part, this right here, where I was the Yankee fan. I'll just explain how stupid that was later. So, but but then I realized, no, this is this is too long. It's too it's too much. It's not even uh, entertaining. It's kind of slow. It's I got I just got to speed things up, get to the point. And uh, then I realized, okay, let me just do a try to get as quick to the point as I can. I try to like just show the art, just show how cool it is, show the the art without even giving a backstory. I, oh, that's another. I had a backstory, my grandfather and my great aunt. A little mini backstory because there's a lot I don't know about my great aunt, and uh, even there's a lot of still I'm finding out about my grandfather, where he was when he was in the Air Force. And uh, he had, we have a whole long video of him describing what he did during the Air Force. Uh, but even that probably is missing some details and there's some old photos and maybe paperwork he has. So again, I had a whole setup. I took 40 takes or more. And this is what I end up with. This is my first take of this section it took two minutes long um and once like after the 40 takes i was doing then i was like you know i'm just gonna make it short and sweet this is what i call this take and after i did one short and sweet take i was like okay wait, this is two minutes long i'm done but looking back this is probably not the best take for promoting this art collection, collection on open C. C. i like this down, down is because oh yeah as far as putting on bitcoin once so now i'm looking into it some marketplaces, you put on Bitcoin, it puts like a one megabyte image on Bitcoin. And then the rest, like the full image, it's a hundred, it's the full, you know, because I think IPFS can go, well, I know Ethereum or on OpenSea, it's like the limit is a hundred megabytes, but I don't know about IPFS itself. Then I looked on a website, it says the Bitcoin limit is five megabytes. So again, I don't want to go you know, diving deep into, okay, let's just make some money, put on OpenSea, put on whatever Bitcoin exchange, throw these on, and then I go realize, oh, wait, I just sold something. The guy has like a one megabyte, guy or gal, one megabyte image, and okay, it's cool, great art, but then it's like, oh, you could have put it on this, I could have put it on this and this. So that's where I want to like hold up on, do the best research, see what the limit is, put it on there once, um, and uh yeah just because it's also a way to preserve i could put this just alone on ipfs i could put this alone on facebook on Flickr, on just on a website but i guess i'm just approaching this like okay i want to market this i want to promote it and put it on bitcoin once and that'll be my way of also preserving it um and again i'm still having some doubts because with OpenSea's auction option, I don't have to worry about investing my own money to mint and then hoping or then marketing and seeing if there's enough followers uh, to buy it, enough interest. And uh, it's there's, there's a story actually, I met a lady um, who had worked with my great aunt uh, she owned a small like pharmacy somewhere in midtown and yeah she said um she worked with somebody else once who bought a huge supply of something with the expectation that he was going to sell it and he ended up having this collection of i don't know whatever it was in his apartment filling up his whole living room and he barely sold anything 
So that's, I feel like that's the same mistake I want to avoid with just minting these, paying for the gas fees, Ethereum. That's why I'm going through the auction option. That's why I'm not going to just put my own money on any of these on NFT because who knows what they might sell for. And compared to some of the art I've so seen, and you'll see in the video later, I mean, like potatoes and bananas selling for... I mean, I know art is subjective and who knows why people make millions with whatever reasons, but this is worth more to me than money alone in some ways, but also I think it's worth a lot. And I don't want to just like sell this for a few Ethereums here and there. I mean, I guess I'll take it, but then again, it, no, this is worth like out the rarity of this. And I'll get into that a little bit more later. I'll just play it. Amazon, Amazon, like, well, oh yeah, that's true too. Sure. Amazon. I'm sure, I'm I might wait for that. Show you. Show you about the about the later. Actually, I don't know. Amazon might come with like just music and stuff. Uh, I don't know if they want to get into cards. cards. Open scene. Uh, yeah. So in this box, there's a whole like. There's a bunch of originals and then there's copies because she printed them. She had a printer or she used some printing service. And uh, so this box is nearly full of duplicates. Some of them have some weathering because they were, they were stored in the basement, even some of the originals actually. And you can see, if you look closely on some of the scans, you can see some like marks that we can take out and maybe I could take them out with Photoshop. Um, but yeah, she had, uh, I'd, yeah, I'd say about 150 originals, and we only scanned about 100 of them. At the time, I think we thought we scanned them all, but I looked through them this again, and I found some we missed, and um, yeah, so she had, it wasn't actually this box too, she had a whole bag of these like little envelopes she would put them in, and um, I'm sure, like, I could just imagine she was in Central Park at a street fair and she had a whole table set up. She put them in, like, envelopes and then these, like, little baggies. And so she had all of that. We had all of that in the basement. And my grandfather just happened to find it back in, what, like, 2014? And, yeah, because he, he was the super of the building and he, we had all, we had access to the basement. We just put everything store our storage room was like the basement so we had a lot of stuff tools and everything and th there was a bag and this just kind of crammed in a corner of the, of the basement somewhere on a shelf that was a bad transition i had a bunch of different takes let me go back so i had a take where i was like and what well, I just told you the story, and my grandfather found this in the basement, um, and you know, blah 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 blah. And he was, and then I, but this take wasn't that good, I would say. But again, I guess I was just like, I was over with. I was like, and I think also at the time I had this idea. It was like, okay, here's another way to promote it. I'll put this up, uh, this Yankee fan thing, and time's running out. I think I had like, at the time I had like 12 days. And I'll tell you, it took a long time to put this up for some stupid little reason. So I was like, oh, I gotta hurry up because um, I wanna put this up, generate some hype, this Yankee fan NFT. So I just gotta hurry up with this take. This is take. It's taking forever. So yeah, initially I had a better transition, but yeah, I got, I really gotta emphasize this photo. I can't believe this photo isn't published somewhere. Um, um, he, he has actually two prints of this. Uh, so his prints are from his own dark room, his dark room he had in his apartment. So it is absolutely a one of a kind. Like this is his photo, he took this photo, he had the negative and he made two prints of this. Um, and I've talked to people, I've kind of felt weird promoting it and make, making money. And I'm at the point where 
I definitely am going to donate one of the prints to the 9-11 memorial. Um, I emailed them and I'll probably just go in person. I'll just say, uh, but I don't know who to come. I'm kind of waiting for their email, but this print is incredible. Like one of the, just the timing, um, it just looks cool. It almost kind of like, like with this kind of connection right here, like it kind of overlaps. It kind of reminds me of, uh, damn, I forgot his name. I'm, I'm gonna try to remember it. Philippe Paton, when he was, when he put a wire between the two, it's almost like, this is kind of like that. Um, yeah. But again, I'm just like, ah! And it, what's crazy too, it's it's somewhat me to blame. I moved to New York to live with him back in 2012. And it just came out of dropping off. I dropped out of college. And at the time I was like, I don't know what to do. I want to just maybe be an actor or something or be a model or something. So I kind of dedicated my time to just being on the computer, just watching YouTube and maybe looking up gigs. I was being an extra, I was an extra for two years and uh but oh man and at the time too he wanted to maybe make a website go on facebook but he was like ah, i don't know about this kind of you know he was an older guy so at the time this is him when he was younger maybe about my brother's age like early 20s but yeah at the time like i should have definitely like said okay wait Ram Joe, let's look through your stuff like what do you have let's really like because i can't i couldn't believe this is after he passed away i found this and i was like and who knows, maybe he did show me, I just didn't remember, I don't know, but it's an it's incredible photo. Um, you could read this here. Uh, oh yeah, these, this is, I think, his greatest, and then I ordered this, these, in his, uh, this is like a second greatest, third, fourth. This is not as, I considered his fifth, and just after that, I just couldn't. Uh, really, maybe this is his fifth. I like this one, but he, I think, oh, well, you'll see. I think he considered this his favorite. But this one's interesting because, what did I call it? A youthful class divide. So, when I first looked at this, I was like, okay, these are probably just neighborhood kids. And then when I really tried to think about, like, how do I market this? Or what could this picture be called? And I'm thinking, like, wait a second, you got poor kid maybe a poor kid then you got a middle class maybe middle class upper middle class looking kid and like uh, upper class kid looking you know like it's like wow these these are children i mean now they're adults to me but at the time these are children and it's like it's almost like you're they say like you have no free will, or do you have free will, or is your space-time lifeline inevitable from a certain point of view? And these kids, you know, who knows what, what they became of them as adults today, but it's as if they're all, you know, they're all together here in this neighborhood, here in the picture, and they're just children. And you can even make it a religious thing from a certain point of view, from God's point of view. No matter what, you, in, in the end, you're just going to still be just a child, you know, all together. Uh, so that's why I consider, I looked at this and this is like, okay, this is the second greatest photo. Because it's, for all we know, these some of these people may have passed away. They may be completely living separate lives, so in different parts of the world, country. And they may have even lived up to my stereotypical point of view of what I consider this picture. The kid may have ended up being poor and this kid, and he may have been middle class and upper middle class and upper class. Uh, but definitely it's like at some point they were all together and and from a certain point of view, they're still all together here on the planet, but that's like a whole philosophical thing. But that's what I thought about when I named this picture. This picture, I was like, didn't even realize what corner this was until my dad pointed out this was Joe Hugs. It's now like a Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, if 
you live in Murray Hill, if you live in Manhattan, you'll know 20, the northwest corner of 27th Street and 3rd. There is a, actually more back here, it's one of those, uh, what are those things called with the advertisements and the, uh, it used to be phone booths. It's like the little, you plug in your phone and, you know those advertising things it's a little back more here but this is the northwest corner so when i was like i realized that i was like okay wait whoa so yeah we, we know everything about what's going on in this picture now except for who is this and it's again it's probably just like some neighborhood girl but it's kind of mysterious like whoa, everything about this picture can be known of what happened to it or if not known who cares about what happened to these are either junkyards decaying or maybe somebody held on to one of these cars but like who says this is important like who is that um this picture my grandfather talked about a lot not a lot um he did mention it though like and not this specific picture he mentioned once he took a picture of a homeless man and when like he felt like well just the look in his eyes he captured just who he was and he couldn't find it and after he passed I found this one and I was like I guess it's probably it um yeah oh, okay I don't think I mentioned it. so he yeah he said well he didn't say but I think this was his favorite you'll see in the video but I think this was even this is a little better because you got some people in there. Oh, that's another thing. I know this video is long, but this is voiceover commentary. After going through, after he passed, I went through his computer and he had layers and layers of, uh, you could say copies or just backups. And so I wanted to sort through everything and some of it was kind of mixed up. So I sorted through everything. That took a long time. And one of the patterns I noticed even just about being a photographer. And I told my cousin, who's interested in photography, Jackie, the one thing people will remember, or at least I do, after looking through, I mean, my grandfather's a photographer since 50, early 50s to 2021. So just looking back, what's interesting to me, at least, are all the pictures of with people. Because then it's like, whoa, that's interesting. Like, this is interesting, okay? That's like monuments, that's interesting. Maybe even cars, like, okay, that's cool. But like pictures of trees, that could be anywhere. You know, <laughs> that could be anytime. You can make a picture of a tree, because trees don't really change. Like even this picture, let me play this a little bit longer. Yeah, I think that's true. Okay, yeah. But even this picture, somebody might be able to create it. But this picture, you can kind of tell these people are from the 60s. Maybe not. But I'm just saying, pictures with people will last a lifetime. I'm talking about in a thousand years from now, people will be like, whoa, who was that? Who was that person? Talk about like all this government intrusion and spying and that's a big thing right now with um i know there's rod braxman tech the youtuber i mean coin bureau is talking about it youtubers like trader university just created a video about the TikTok. um what is it the TikTok bill but it's more intrusive than the patriot act but in some ways when you think about like 500 years from now nobody's gonna remember Nobody's gonna, even if I'm famous, that's the thing too. Like who was famous in the 1920s? That was just a hundred years ago. I don't give a shit. I don't care, I don't know. Maybe I do care a little bit. Like, okay, that was a great movie. But again, 1920s movies, silent movies, you gotta really be into movies then. Think about it in the future. So in some ways though, you'll be like, okay, but it's interesting to figure out like who this person was. As far as being a photographer, if you wanna be a great photographer sometimes just taking pictures of people that's there's a photographer eddie huang i was playing pickup basketball in 2022 uh 
He's a cool kid. He's got a cool story. I'll give you, I'll put his Instagram. He's going out, he's taking pictures of people. That's what you want to do. Um, this picture is cool. I don't think it can be recreated again because I think it's uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. I think maybe, who knows, maybe they added some things at the top here or this land post has been placed. Uh, but in some ways, it's not the greatest picture you can take when you talk about like these people, like look at this old uniform and stuff. Like even if it's a bad picture of people, sometimes just taking a picture of people is so important, so great. So that's what I've learned after going through a photographer's photographs. Just again, a tenth of them, what he had in the computer. Um, from the 50s to 2021, the pictures of people, even if it's just a bad picture, a random picture, are just interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any favorites, but I think it was his favorite. Oh yeah, like this one, I think this one's gonna put this one on the top. You could look at abandoned, like who is this guy? You know, like it's an interesting picture. It's I was gonna have a name for I forgot what I was gonna say, but something like I thought maybe he could have been homeless too. I mean like you know, with all the decay and this going around him, it's like he's still important enough to just say, Hey, look at this cool guy. I gotta make a whole video of like what I think about these pictures. I gotta do it with my dad or um, my great aunt Eva or, or just like, cause my dad, he grew up in the neighborhood when he was a kid from, he was born in 1966. So I'm sure he knows more. And actually he did tell me, like after I, I sent him this and he did tell me like, oh yeah, I know this and I know that. and. So actually, I, I'll just go through this and maybe I'll make a more bigger detailed video commentary of just these photos alone. <coughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna keep it rolling. Is this, this is voiceover commentary. some water All right. All right. Uh, yeah these pictures are colors photos again this is just a handful of what I had the best of what I had where I considered the best on his computer um, I noticed this too this is stuff is he scanned it um i'll probably rescan it or maybe crop it um he had a name for this i don't know if it was like a local guy this is a local neighborhood guy um my dad said he i don't know if he said he had a name for this but i don't know if this was like a guy because this this is the empire state building this is fifth avenue and between 34th and 33rd Local neighborhood stick ball cat. I think maybe could have been a pet. Oh, that's another thing. Here's an interesting story. My great aunt Julie. She was known to have hundred cats in her apartment. Any time this is like back in the seventies when it had a lot of stray dogs and cats running around. So anytime somebody wanted to get rid of a cat or there was a stray cat, she just said what was the way my grandpa put it. It's like somebody needed. A home for a cat she's like yeah yeah bring him right in um so she yeah she was the cat lady too that's john reese still lives in the neighborhood see him all the time oh i'm gonna go back did i go back ah 
Oh, okay. This picture I had a name for, but I took it down because I don't know, it's just messed up in so many ways. I called it Stagflation Santa Claus. I named it at the time when I was hearing things like we could be in a stagflation economy, or a great, another great recession. But it's so messed up. Messed up to Santa Claus and messed up to the whole situation of people. Because who knows, it could be... Because I'm seeing, I'm like, I'm making deliveries, working with Carlton Pack, messenger service just started. And yeah, oh, I'm not gonna go back all the way. But just like that picture with like the uh, store closing down, that's what I'm seeing happening right now in New York. Um, so to call this stagflation Santa Claus, I mean, it may be true, but yeah, it's just messed up. Yeah, this picture is cool. I hope he has more of these. Just like Times Square, just the cars, or just the street. My dad might know who these people are. He's looking so trash. Okay, talk about protests. He has some protest pictures. There's people protesting in the 60s who were anti Martin Luther King. Something I never realized there were protests against. I mean, I knew people didn't like Martin Luther King, but there were organized protests. He has pictures of those. Um, and I could have included him here at the time. I think I was like, I did have him here, but then I was like, I don't know if I want to put that in the video, but they're really interesting. Because it's like, I forget what, there's a poster that says something like, Martin Luther King, the greatest purveyor of violence in America today. And it was a whole organized protest. Yeah, I think he only has like seven pictures of that protest that he has. Of. Oh, on his computer too, from what he scanned. So who knows, he might have more. Oh yeah, that's my dad when he was little and that's my grandma. about it I'll tell you I'm gonna include the, well what's the next yeah the Yankee thing so okay this Yankee fan took four days to put on OpenSea and it'll be for a stupid reason and I even tried to put this picture on OpenSea because this again the Yankee season just started uh, a couple days ago and I'm figuring I'm, so it's like 12 this is so I made this take 12 days before that. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I gotta put something else on the video too. To just kind of like get attention. And it's another, way, another way to stay up to date. And my idea was, I don't know, I just throw out this as an auction and wait for people to see if they wanna buy it. And like an idiot though, I put this crazy high price because I thought it'd also kind of be funny and bring attention kind of like what Mr. Beast does um, but I'll explain later in the video I could do that right now so um, essentially what you want in a Dutch auction I mean here's the graph here's when you start day zero and then here's some time where you pick let's some time and you got the auction starts at whatever high price and this is price price and this is time so you pick whatever price let's say like right here and this price could be any number you know let's just call that any number and then over time and the descending auction or Dutch auction, the price falls to a particular time. You set. And then anywhere in between, at some point, somebody could say, oh yeah, I want that. Boom. Right there. Um, what I did was I put it, because I thought it'd be funny. Wait, where am I? 
I put it to the highest amount to the range of the lowest. But even if I had it at one ETH, because it's so high, it would have, this is the graph I got. It's basically a vertical line. And the rate at which it's falling, um, I could do like with a Wolfram Alpha here. Um, it's just, you divide the, the big number. It's like D equals RT, distance equals rate over time. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how it's done. I don't know. You could, if anybody watches this, they could let me know. Um, but that's me. That's what? 16 trillion dollars, 16 trillion Ethereum per day. And I mean, I could calculate what it would have been per second exactly. I'm just kind of guesstimating. What was it? Uh, I kind of just guesstimated here because I know it was kind of ridiculous. I kind of just kind of, I looked at the graph and I was like, it was six days. The auction was about six days and I kind of just played with the numbers. I knew it started around this, well, it started exactly at this. That's how many ETH. And uh, yeah, so I kind of just guess I made add, you know, took away a number here until the graph moves. I could do that now. You know, I could I initially put like nine, all nine, 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 all the way. And it was like, okay, I was gonna make the video and just, okay, assume this is six days, but I figured, you know, let me just figure this out real quick. One, that's five days. I was gonna make the video and this could be six uh okay that's good enough but who knows exactly what i'm not exactly sure exactly what the equation would have been with what i did but this is pretty close to illustrate how crazy it was and the amount of time of realistic purchase i put that on my instagram was probably like a femtosecond because it was decreasing by 16 trillion dollars ethereum every day and at every second, it was like 200 billion Ethereum. It was decreasing every second by 200 billion. So as far as getting attention, maybe that's something for Mr. Beast, or maybe not even. I mean, this was not a good idea. It was a bad idea. And as far as actually generating, getting some funding, this was a really bad idea. Okay, did you? Yeah, I didn't realize until after I made the video. I, the sub talk about Freud slips. The sub my subconscious was really like, yeah, time to make some money here. <laughs> And after I made the video and I watched it, I was like, what? I couldn't believe that. I was actually, I didn't even realize I was doing that. So at the time I made this, I was really like, okay, this could be, I could, have, could make, I could be a millionaire in, in the next seven days. I'm going back, I'm going up. back up. I don't know, we'll, I don't know. we'll see. We'll see. Yankees, 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 Hunter, 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 March 30th, March 30th, March 30th March 5, 5. Starting from Max, Max, Max. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, okay, I created this 12 days before the season and Initially, I thought of recording me putting all of these in. Square brown dude flow, what he cast with friendly goes. Beautiful day, baseball weather. Picture square black dude. Um, do I click on the stats just to show you? Okay, so there's the stats. Nostalgia, 7 out of 10. Sophistication, 0. Thought provoking, 10. Power level, over 9,000. And then I typed 9. And just, or hell, 9. All the way. 
and then I press create and nothing happened. Oh no, a capture came up and I just kept on doing the capture. And I'm like, what's happening? I can't create a, an NFT. So then I used the other picture of the Yankee fan who's celebrating the 96 World Series. I used him. I was like, okay, maybe this will work. Maybe it's because this drawing, I don't know. It had, it was like 50 kilobytes. I did the same thing. And I'm like, what's going on? So I emailed OpenSea, like, what's going on? Wait a day, retry to, I don't know what I retried. Um, eventually, I thought of the idea of going on my iPhone. Or no, at first I thought of the idea of creating a virtual machine and downloading Linux because maybe some for some reason my computer's hacking, being hacked, or because at first they told me I can't even, there's certain browsers I can't use when I emailed. So I'm like, oh, I can't use a certain browser. And then I thought, well, maybe Windows operating system. So I got to download Linux and virtual machine. And I'm like, ah, but then I realized, okay, wait, I got an iPhone. Let me just try to do it on an iPhone. And it still wasn't working. And that made me think, okay, wait, because iPhones don't get hacked or don't have as many viruses, there's something I'm doing that's wrong. And then that's when it clicked. Maybe the, because this number has an E to the plus 21 uh, so I think what I did was I just didn't put anything in here. I just created it and it created the, yeah, it just created, uh, the NFT, just what I, uh, this drawing. I'm like, oh, so, okay. So there's something definitely not wrong with my computer. There's something wrong I'm doing down here. And I bet you it's that E to the plus the power level maximum so then i just tried to figure out okay well what is the maximum and you know i type in 9 15 times type in 9 14 13 and the limit is 12 so for all you dragon ball z fans out there who 40 minutes into this video if you want to know what open seas limit power level limit it's 999,999,999. That is the limit OpenSea gives. You could have any power level on any other, and that's that's a good indication too for planet Earth. Anytime, you know, all these people they're going all over the place, all over these planets. But when they come to Earth, on OpenSea on this on the water planet, they're limited. They can't go over a billion. Not Goku, not not anybody. According to OpenSea, it can't be over a billion. Uh, but that was driving me crazy. Um, and for what a stupid little reason, too, because then I put myself, you know, I was, I was in a rush. Um, I think that's it. That's all I have to say about that. Let me just see. Uh, Couldn't create an NFT, I thought my computer was hacked. See what happened. Okay, yeah, so that was stupid. Uh, you can see... Uh, okay, this is an example of what a regular Dutch auction should be. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, exact but basically, you get the idea. You know, you start at a price, and it falls, and then you... You know, also the whole point of a Dutch auction too, is you have to have enough people interested in it. You can't just do a Dutch auction and be like, get some followers. Although that's, at one point I was thinking maybe that is the best way to do it for me because it's a way to motivate myself to get more followers, to put more attention into this project. So it's both, it's doing both. It's both saying, okay, wait a second. I don't have that many followers and every time I lack, I waste time, I may be potentially losing money. So I really want to get my attention into this myself. Um, but traditionally a Dutch auction, you have a lot of people who are interested in it and they're paying attention and they're like, okay, uh, 
as the price falls, uh, who's the one who really wants the most for it? Um, there's a number file video describing that. I had it up here, I took it back because I it because I want to look professional making this commentary, but can I look this up again? I mean, I don't know, I'll put it in the description. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of theories on auctions and after even trying to just research, okay, wait, what's the equation for a Dutch auction? And I kind of just, I think this is it. I've just figured it out. It's basically a linear expression going down. I mean, this is the extreme example, but you get, you know, you start at a point at the highest price you're willing and well, with the Dutch auction too, you can set a lowest price to it, like at this point or something. And then over time, this just, you know, D equals RT or really R equals uh, the rate at which it falls is equal to D divided by T, the distance, the, the highest price to the lowest price divided by time. That's the rate at which, you know, per day or whatever, per whatever you want to say per day, per second, per hour, at which it decreases. So I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, and uh, wait, where was I going with this? Basically, yeah, this was stupid. <laughs> um, and uh, oh no, I was gonna say, I even when I tried to look up the equations, I was looking, like things on Google were popping up like, things from Harvard, Yale, all these like functions, prime functions. Um, I mean, we're talking about people who are like absolutely maximizing the most profit and talking about like human um, tendency to say like people in Dutch auctions tend to bid more than other types of auctions because the excitement, no, that's that's in the number five, but like the, the whole thing, things I was like looking up just looking up for the simple equation and it just happened to be a simpler linear equation um, so yeah that was that part of the video that I just completely botched and this next part just absolutely came out of nowhere actually no it didn't I forgot okay so I'm, I'm doing making this video I, I thought of the title you know, maybe like 15 days before the season. And I'm like, yeah, to NFT or not to NFT? Oh, that's another thing. I didn't, I should have put a question mark because of course it's the question. And then I figured, no, I'll leave it because I'm definitely making an NFT and I definitely intend to make an NFT. Um, but then this next part, again, just came out of nowhere. It just one day, oh no, I, I typed in, okay, wait, trying to take, yeah, that's famous. I know that's like some kind of famous, wh where did that come from? Like I completely just blacked out on like, you know, to be or not to be the Shakespeare or Hamlet play. And, you know, I didn't pay attention much in school with in Hamlet and all the Shakespeare and stuff. I mean, I paid attention enough respectfully, of course, but it's like, it's one of those things just like flushed out. Um, and, uh, so I forgot what that was. Look at what what is I forgot what I even searched for to figure it out. I said like to blank or not to blank. What is that from? And it's like oh yeah, Hamlet. And I came and I I saw this. What is it called? The the line that was from. And I was reading it. And it was like you know. To be or not to be was it nobler. To. What was it? Was it just nobler to. Um. What it was I don't know. to be or not to be? Yeah, so I saw like okay, to be in a is nobler to in the mind to suffer the slings of arrows of outrageous fortune to take arms against them in the sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die and sleep no more and by the sleep to save me in the heartache and a thousand natural shocks of flesh is air to consumption to violate to be wished to die to sleep to sleep a chance of dream ah, that's the problem. or in the sleep of death. Boom. And I was like, oh. Okay, so I got to do something with that. 
um, and then end it here. And I'm thinking of thinking, okay, and, and I guess at some point I'm like, oh, the sea, open sea. Okay, we really got to do something like this. Um, and of course, I then I remembered this video, um, Shakes Beer OP. Uh, is this the long video? There's a long and short one. This is a short one. This is a whole 10 minute one. And I'm like, oh yes, I gotta do something. And I'm practicing, I'm thinking about I'm practicing the accent, I'm trying to, you know, and the accent's going from Russian to like, you know, I'm like a Tibet, not Tibet, that's the question. And I'm going like, oh, the R's, they rolled the R's. What if there's no girl in the mind to suffer? The slings and arrows are outrageous fortune. Or to take arms up against them and see your troubles. And by opposing in them to go to sleep no more. My sleep is heavy and heartbreak. My thousand other shocks. My flesh is there to this consumption. My family to be wish. This sleep a chance a dream? Uh, that is not hard. But I didn't sleep at that. What dream was my goal? And I'm getting more passion. I want this passion. I'm getting the French accent coming in. Like, oh, he needs a passion. And, uh, and then I go, I step back and go, wait a second, wait a second. Let me just be myself, make this video. And it actually ends up being kind of bland. Talk about like in the beginning, in the early parts. Like what, what video? 319. Talk about the beginning. I had to, actually, I redid this too at the very last second. Because I said to myself, this is kind of blues cluesy. Like it's too, like I know YouTube is now becoming more geared towards children. I'm starting to notice that now. And like some more adult stuff is on Spotify. And even Spotify is still kind of like censored. It's not even like what it used to be like, not like Jackass or like, not like anything I've seen before when I was a kid. But YouTube is definitely more like children's stuff, like Blues Cluesy. And this beginning is definitely like Blues Cluesy. That's what I call it. Like, and then it kind of gets, okay, maybe a little more serious, but like still kind of like, eh. And then like right here, I figured, let me just be myself. But even this looking back, the first few takes were definitely blues cluesy. Or maybe not. Because I think I was trying to do with the accent. But it's the whole... Because, again, it's like... With YouTube, it's kind of like... It's definitely starting to gear itself more towards children. But anyway, um, where was I going? So I was like... Oh, I'm in... So in the middle of all this thought, I'm trying to think of how do I spin this for what's going on. And I'm just like... Then I realized, okay, let me just look up what I'm really thinking, what I've been seeing, what I've been over the last year or so. And that's when, well, let me just play this. And, oh, you know what's messed up too? This is blurry. Because I put it the all, uh, I'm using an Icon Z6. I put it on um, what focus mode, auto area. Because I think that's what it initially was on. But I think in this take, was it focus whether, mode? Whether or my head keep it going pure. I don't know. I'm gonna go back a little bit though. Okay, so while trying to figure out well, how to change the. Um, how to change the words on this to fit what I'm doing for the video. I'm just thinking about things like, okay, what have I learned in the last like year? And uh, I'm trying to also be kind of like Stanley Kubrick, kind of hide some things here and there. And so I got this history of global banking, broken system by economics explains. And that gave me a really good perspective on like how people treat money and like what the purpose of money was. And, there was a story in here, people back, I don't know, 1600s, 1500s, and essentially the paper receipt, it was a rece the paper money was essentially a receipt for the coins that they had in the bank. And the coins were what was the real value. And that paper receipt, it was just a receipt. And, you know, the, there are people who, who own these 
places that would just store these heavy things that you don't want to lug all around. They call them banks. But then the people operating these storage places, these banks, were starting to realize, wait, people cared more about the receipts than the actual coins they had. So then, you know, talk about, now this is like a, the seed for conspiracy. It's like, now it's like, okay, wait a second. And then that's when it gets to the point where it's like explaining the whole history. And I mean, truth be told, it's like, maybe that's why people love Bitcoin so much because the whole point people love the, the receipts, the paper, it was just more efficient. Um, but every, what, everything's going on now with the SEC cracking down on, I'm just watching a CTL Larson video, the SEC seems to be cracking down right now on companies following the rules as much as they can and they miss the most corrupt companies from FTX and Sam Bankman Freed who just happened to know Gary Gensler or you know, there's a, a connection there and they're missing all these real corrupt, you know, talk about conspiracy, but I mean, so I had this, this is my Stanley Kubrick kind of thing, like, okay, check this video out. And then Will Ronald's destroy NFT and Bitcoin. Um, destroy Bitcoin. Door, door. Something, something, something arrow. Somebody just went right there. What do you think? Arms take arms up against it. Something to see. Am I posing? Am I posing? Am I posing? Am I NFT? Not, not. No, no more. Am I an NFT? 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 Am Yeah, okay, so well, so here I am. I'm just, I have to watch that again, okay? <laughs> so there was a lot of cool things rolling in my head. There's rum and churning, whatever you want to call it. Oh, churning, that's another thing. I gotta go back. One of the takes I had, talk about being blues cluesy, was, so, okay. <laughs> One of the takes I had after this was finished, I was gonna say, okay, so if that doesn't get your giblets churning, maybe this will. <laughs> and I was gonna say something else kind of dumb, and I realized after watching it, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> it's like, all right, if that doesn't get your giblets churning, kids, maybe this, <laughs> you know, like, Okay, so I, I took that off. Um, so, so I'm here now, and I'm like, what have I learned in the last year? Well, I learned that, the history of the global banking system, and I kind of connect the dots here and there, especially with everything's going on. And what, what is, what's the next one? Oh, yeah, what, oh, that's this, Will Ornos. And I, le I learned this recently, you know, a month ago. And I'm like, okay, wait, whether it's nobler to keep Bitcoin pure or suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous money printing. When so we, that the we start was awesome. Pure. Something, something, something arrows. Something. Harrison Financial, I, I started watching him after I quit Caps of Pharmacy. Um, and there's a whole story with Cap. I mean, I have opinions, mixed opinions, but at the end of the day, they gave me a job. Um, so, you got this, uh, okay, this, this is a great video, the real reason everyone's quitting their jobs. Um, what, when was this, back a year ago? And stuff for the slings and arrows of outrageous money printing. Okay, so I'm rolling pretty good. Now to take arms up against it on OpenSea, take arms up against the outrageous money printers, you know, the corruptions. So, 
it's almost like it's being revealed, but it's like slop. It's like everybody talk about decay and what is it like entropy? It's like it's almost impossible to be. It's impossible to contain yourself in the modern world, in or modern world. When I say modern world, I mean like because back back in the fifties, it's thought it was the modern world. It's possible to contain yourself in twenty twenty three with, with the internet and how fast everything moves. N nearly impossible, and I'm like. Oh, this is perfect too. I remember watching this because talk about conspiracy and ending them and by posing end them. When I watched this video, I was like, what the fuck? Influenza pandemic, solar activity cycles, and vitamin D. This is basically saying just at the just so happens at the time when the solar level, when the sun is at its weakest, you could say. Um, and, and though, again, I don't know exactly all the details, I'm not a scientist or anything, but it seems like the sun has a cycle of when it spews out more photons and you get more vitamin D and, and at the lowest point in its cycle, that's when the pandemic started. And you could say it's like a war thing with China, maybe that's, it's all China's fault. But then with all these connections with Anthony Fauci and talk about being guilty, like that's the cl classic thing, when you're guilty, you like, you're the first one to be like, Oh, I want to help everybody, and but not really though, too, because that could be a trap. I mean, either way, you could say it's all a setup. Maybe Anthony Fauci is set up, China's set up, everybody's set up. But the truth is, this is actually you know during the solar's minimum. You know, this, there's a pandemic, and they I've heard vitamin D does help the immune system and could help with preventing COVID or treating COVID. So I'm like, whoa, there's a conspiracy, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm going to take arms up against it, get some money and get the fuck out of here, you know. Um, okay, yeah, this video is great. I had, at this point, I thought I was going to get stuck, but no, this video includes everything. It includes line goes up. It includes legal, legal. Um, and Steve Mould, yeah, he, he describes exactly what an NFT is. So it's, in other words, I'm not trying to scam you. I'm just selling art, you know, I'm not, you know, if you watch this video, you basically get an idea of what NFTs actually are. Yeah, no. Am I an Am I NFT? NFT you say you know. heartache? Okay, so that was like, the, the kids becoming millionaires. It's like, these kids are now getting ahead of the game. Um, in, in one sense, you could say, you know, maybe they're falling behind in real life because their perception of the world is going to be through the lens of how to spend a lot of money more expensively than anybody else. But then again, at the end of the day, but it's, you know, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game, because that's what we're all kind of after, right? Um, as far as being mature and, and everything. I mean, what would my grandfather used to say, and this is when he was older. He said when he was younger, or when he was older. Well, he used to say, or he once said, he remembers when he was younger, he said, respect your elders. And he's like, no, I know old people today who are, who are stupid, who, who don't deserve respect. Or not maybe not deserve respect, but he just said like we were definitely wrong. And looking back now that I'm older, they were still wrong. <laughs> um, and for all I know, he could have my grandfather could have been wrong. So talk about people like when you get older, you know you gotta respect your elders, but at a certain point you gotta realize too that old people were just as young and stupid. So again, this is like you know these kids are getting ahead of the game. Um, and in some ways, yeah, they're okay, they'll fall behind on um, other things. Like, you could say what it's like to live down to earth. But again, like, if you live in America, you're not really down to earth anymore. It's like everybody's real rich from a certain point of view. And with the internet, I mean, even though there's no actual money tied to it, but just information alone has made people so, like rich and knowledgeable. It's definitely not like what it was in the 90s. And I have a hint of memory of what, you know, I was like eight years old. 
in the 90s, so it's definitely completely different. And that's me coming from, I'm 30 years old, I got a hint of what it was like in the 90s. I can't imagine what people who are, well, if they're in their 40s, they were like a teenager in the 90s. Like, imagine what, like, right now people are 50, 60, like, you know, they're, who knows what they're thinking. Um, so, yeah, the end the heartache of, of the endless money printing. And the heartache. And the thousand, and the thousand, and the thousand aftershocks. And the thousand aftershocks. I mean, at this point, it started kind of like getting out of focus here because I, I wanted to include these guys because talking about marketing, I was like, okay, yeah, I've learned a lot from them. Just watching their free videos and they have a whole NFT academy and everything. Uh, but I don't think that coincides with the words too well. And I have to include Yoma Tech too because he had a funny video. So, so, so. Yeah, too much consumption, too much consumption, too little nourished. Yeah, this juxt juxtaposition here. Um, yeah, people selling a banana duct taped to a wall for $120,000. And I mean, there's been food shortages even before when I was a kid. And talk about um, the thumbnail on this video, the, refri the freezer. That's actually okay, on a website um, I'm going to make. But making it on Wix. And I've had... And I was going to include it in this video, too. I was like, but then I was like double thinking. Like I was like, should I include this because of the food shortages coming up? And like, OK, I don't think that's like appropriate because I mean, even if it's not really in bad, like for a bad, bad pun, even if it's not a bad taste, it's like it's just, I don't want to go there, you know? All it takes is some kid to say, oh, wait, I want to be, I want to make money with NFTs because um, I want food too, so let me just do something. Like, if, that, if I create a website and they come across it. But again, that's, in some ways, that's like a delusion of grandeur. For all I know, my, what my video has 23 views, and plus, yeah, for... NFTs and cryptocurrency probably will get you food. And so what? I'm American. I got to feel bad that you're a fucked up country because of, who knows, maybe because of America. But I have a feeling also because of the corruption within the people in your own country. And I've heard stories. There's a lot of corruption in all these countries. And the overall cause at the, in times are probably the people who have the most control and you could say America does, but... I mean, for me to feel bad that I have a refrigerator on a website or a thumbnail, I'm feeling less and less bad because I'm not coming from the point of view of like, I'm not like really, like I've seen people on Instagram showing like, I know I'm making an excuse comparing myself to others because they're probably doing it worse in this context. So, okay, I'll stop there, but I'll say like, just a, a refrigerator showing pictures on a refrigerator that's a creative idea I'm, I'll probably make the website with the refrigerator because it's just it's not coming from a bad place for the fact that there's food shortages I mean for all I, I can do is I could create a verifiable charity talk about all this corruption with the cryptocurrency now, there's an actual opportunity to create a charity that's absolutely verifiable to see, okay, where exactly? That's another reason about do donating to charities. Because I know I've heard stories of people, oh, let's just create a charity so I don't have to pay taxes. And then money still goes to that person. It doesn't go anywhere. And I think I remember once when I was younger, I was going to Catholic church to St. Stephen's, my grandfather, and the priest said, and one day he was talking about charity. He said, yeah, the Catholic Church has ranked the, I forget what the word, but it was the most efficient charity. And it's like eight, only 8% 8 doesn't go exactly to the cause. And there's a whole website ranking in the, that Catholic Church, or maybe not the that specific or the whole Catholic churches are number one. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's, um, and I believe it, but in some ways it's like, what would be even better? How would you even verify it? What would be even better is using cryptocurrency. 
you get an absolute verifiable you can see how much money is going to pay people to help pay people to uh pay people to eat food to help and then actual going towards uh help, like who knows creating that's another thing too i've heard stories of people during like floods and hurricanes why would you give money to the red cross they're not a construction company they're not going to build rebuild places you know they're going to give people food water and maybe some umbrellas or something it's like you gotta like if you really want it to help talk about mr beast if he really wants to help there's i'm sure they're like const absolute constructive ways so again that's i don't feel bad about a refrigerator um i also don't feel bad about putting this in even though it's not really the best way to do it but um yeah so like there's something more, i'm starting to think more about like the the charity like yeah like you got an opportunity especially with cryptocurrency it's talk about all the controversy some congress people don't like cryptocurrency the fact that it's very so verifiable again that's also proven like people are starting to reveal the fact that they hate cryptocurrency or they think it's corrupt some i've heard stories people say like you people want privacy because in to make money in this world everybody has to cheat in some ways that because if you're not cheating then you you can't survive like that's how messed up it is so but the fact that the public servants the people who say oh we believe in democracy and everything all that absolutely hate something that is publicly verifiable and they work for the public they're public servants i mean that has to prove something and if you can't it proves that they're absolutely corrupt and they don't serve, they serve themselves. That's crazy. That's the world I'm living in. What's today? April 1st, 2023. That's the world I'm living in. The public servants, there are some public servants, many of them on the Democrat side, who just happen to say that they believe in democracy. That's another weird thing. They say they believe in democracy when Growing up was like, or oh, a republic democracy, but then what? One political party says, no, we're not a republic democracy. We're a, what? Just a democracy like Athens. And then these people are like, oh, wait, there's somebody points out to them. Oh, look, here's a verifiable way to prove exactly where every public dollar is going to. Oh, no, we, we love democracy. We don't like that. We hate that. You have to be retarded to not see that. There's one political party, the Democrats, who are either completely misinformed, because now I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, retarded, or completely corrupt. And I'm not, I'm like saying, okay, I'm on the Republican side. Now I'm getting into politics. I know this is an hour and 11 minutes. I'm not saying I'm a Republican, because I grew up, I watched Stephen Colbert and I watched The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and I've seen. They pointed out the other side as clear as day. I'm sure there's a compilation video on YouTube describing all the corruption on the Republican side. But it's, now it's getting to the point where you got a Mitch McConnell, he's basically just telling you the truth. Look, I'm rich and I just want to, like, it's, it's like, you know, at that point, it's like, I must respect you more. It's like when you approach someone, you're playing basketball against somebody and you're playing defense and you, and you're playing defense against a right-handed player, right? The defender is like a political parties today. They got your right hand right in your face. Okay, they don't like you. They want to take your money. They got the right hand, but they got the left hand kind of hiding. They want to steal the ball from you. So that's the world you live in. You live in a world where every individual American has the ball. Every single one of you. And the political parties, both of them, are the defensive player. Now the right, they have the hand in the face. They want, they definitely want to take the ball away from you. They want to block it. They want to do all that. But the left, they want to steal the ball from you. And they're hiding. And they're like, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's exactly what you're going through right now. Shit, my battery's about to die on my iPhone. This video is an hour long. Wait, hold on. I don't want to mess.
messed up. I'm gonna keep recording this. If this, all right, see, what's 113, 10, 113, 13. Okay, I'm gonna plug this in. If anything happens, I'm just gonna keep this recorded. I'll record it, I'll restart it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so what was I? Yeah, basically, that's the analogy I'm thinking about right now. Talk about blockchain, food shortages. I don't know how I got here. But I'm going to try to like reiterate that analogy. Because I had the, that analogy before. Everybody in America, every public citizen, has the ball. That's the whole point. You could say with the founding fathers and everything. But then you got your political parties and growing up, it's like, yeah, I don't like the right. You know, I'm poor. I might be stupid too. And these, these Republicans, they're all like in my face. Some of them are actually lying too. Some of them, you know, cause some people are lefties. So some of them on the right, they'll be like, okay, I'm hiding. Cause again, they're playing defense. That's the best way to play defense against the guy with the ball. When you're playing against a lefty, you kind of have to switch up. You got to put your left hand up. And you got to put your right hand kind of like swatting the ball or getting ready or to swat the ball. So, but anyway, the point is they're both after you. <laughs> and it's in the right now, it just so happens that with cryptocurrency and it's just looking really corrupt on the left. And as far as the right, though, I mean, who knows? It's probably just as corrupt because... CBDCs are coming. Um, and what's crazy too, there's a lot of scams in cryptocurrency. So they actually may be doing a benefit overall. So it's tough. It's a weird times. Um, yeah, that's it from that rant. Okay, so then I started, again, this is all because I actually, I put all these videos up before I figured out what to say. Or like in the middle, maybe I had like, nobody to keep Bitcoin pure, outrageous money printing. And I was like, okay, yeah. And then I'm still figuring it out. So I had these videos up. I think I put this video because I was thinking about a lot of this motivation too. It's like, wow, I'm seeing places shut down, retail stores. I've heard... If you want to follow my Instagram, and I'll probably repost on YouTube in May. I put a whole yeah, three videos on Instagram, Mayhem, during uh, George Floyd protests, riots. Yeah, places are closing down. I heard stories, people, I'm making deliveries, I'm working for Capsule. Yeah, people are saying they're leaving. I'm in elevators, people are saying they're leaving. Other people are delivering. They're telling me, yeah, um... I just delivered to a building, two floors of this high rise building are completely shut down. So a lot of people are leaving New York and then you got this, you got what's going on and I just realized I'm saying, that's right. This, might, this whole video might get censored because I've said words that will probably be censored. I'm gonna have to go through it and kind of mute some of this. All right, anyway. Um, for all I, know, I don't even know if this is going to get censored. I don't think it will, will be, but um, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to say it because, again, that's another weird thing. Talk about, like, Blue's Clues. Yeah, YouTube is definitely starting to gear itself towards more children. So there, there could be a nuclear war because Putin. But again, it's weird, too, because it's like 1984. And for all I know, like, it's, it's not even real. Whatever. Um, so that's why I put this here. I'm like, could there be a nuclear war? And then I'm like, no, no. is it 1984? I should have put maybe in something in reference to 1984. And what's also weird in this day, Joe Rogan looks like he hasn't slept in a while. Um, but this is an interesting video. The whole podcast is interesting when he talks about, it's almost like kind of like goat in Russia. What's the word? Proud in Russia. But uh, I don't know, Russia's, it's like, it's Russia's revealing itself to be corrupt too. So it's almost like, fuck them, you know?
Okay, so here's where I wrap everything up. I'm like, you know, this craziness, corruption, maybe there's a chance for us to work together. If not, compete. Because I know Russia has focused on Venus. I think they're the first people to send Venus, not people, first, oh yeah, first people to send a rover to, to Mars. And you got Elon Musk, I don't know who else, maybe even NASA, they're like, okay, when are we gonna go to Mars? I mean, Mars is small. It's far, it's small. Talk about colonizing the moon. I don't, you know, I don't even know if I'm qualified to fly a plane, let alone go to the moon. But like for any person, it's so small, your bones are gonna de weaken, you know. And it, it might be like a, a little hub for going to both places. Put some like robots on there, put some machines on there, like refueling tanks, who knows. But going with Venus, this idea, I don't know, look how old this video is too. And this guy's not there anymore, Gabe. Um, the other guy's cool though. Uh, eight years ago, should we colonize Venus? Talk about like secret programs. I mean, I heard stories in the 1960s were testing out the B-2 bomber. You know what I'm saying? You, you hear all these like stories and you just gotta be, you just gotta be smart. You gotta just put the, you know, see the pattern. You know, what you see in the public. You know, just like use your common sense. So I'm like, maybe there's a chance for us to work together, compete, or maybe there's, we're all working together anyway. And we're just trying to like make things more efficient, get rid of the people who, uh, it's kind of sad too. It's like, you want to start a war, get rid of people. That's another conspiracy theory. Or all wars, just like everything's already set in stone. We got all the people, all the smart people will survive because, you know, they'll do whatever officer job. And that's another thing about jobs too, because you got to disconnect, especially working for some jobs. If I, I'm going to say it, Capsule Pharmacy, great place to work with, with certain great people. But at a certain point, I realized the managers had never made a delivery. And it was kind of obvious since the beginning, that, like, sometimes there's a disconnect. So, um, what it applies to this, and how, like, accelerating towards the future, who knows, people may already be working together create a cloud city and uh, everything that's going on is kind of like 1984's either for greed to get rid of people who knows all this climate change words you know they talk about like hard landing soft landing you know with the fed Jerome Powell all these like code words you know for all you know like all the code words you say okay we need to stop climate change. That's just a code word for, we need to kill some people, like a lot of, a huge portion of the population. You know, it's kind of crazy. So at this point I was like, maybe there's a chance to work together and or for me to be a part of the club because I need to get the fuck out of here. Like I'm working for all these poor, like cheap, like uh, companies. I feel like I'm working for McDonald's my whole life, you know? And it's not just one company, but, and again, it could be my fault too, because I'm just always distracted on YouTube, just watching, but. So that's what I'm thinking. And of course you could see, I mean, I'll just describe it here, like 1984. Oh yeah, I did put 1984. Science of Evil by Simon Baron Conan, great book. Uh, it changed my life too, because it described a little bit of my, I found a lot, my grandfather. Uh, that's another thing. Maybe I'll... It's already a crazy long video. I'll just keep it going. When I'm... It, something I developed uh, a while ago. And I don't know why. I mean, my grandfather used to say uh, something about... Beware the scribes and the Pharisees. Which is a Catholic thing. He said... Yeah, it basically means, like, just beware of people just... Writing. That, that's how I interpret it. So one of the things I do when I see a book, I just oh, flip to a random page and just read it and see if it like impacts me. And at a certain point, especially during a stressful time in my life, I went to Barnes and Nobles for some reason, I forgot why, but I think I just went there. 
And I happened to see this book, and I just flipped to the exact page that described my grandfather. And I was, and I was like, boom, I bought this book. Um, yeah, Stan Science of Evil by Simon Baron Cohen. The Stanley Milgram Experiment, I think I included that because I just saw a video about that recently. And it applies to World War II, and who knows, World War III might be coming. And I don't know if this really applies to anything I'm talking about here with Cloud Cities, but it's yeah, it's just something like, because again, if you watch, oh yeah, good thing this, this was suggested. So if you watch Neil deGrasse Tyson's video, Neil deGrasse Tyson's video describing the reason we went to the moon in the first place was a war driver. Right now we got a war going on in Ukraine, who knows what China's setting up. Uh, they're putting people on the moon. The whole like, pe people were kind of like misunderstood. Like, oh, ap after we went to the moon, people were like, future cities, we got future cities and you know, the, all, all this stuff. But the whole reason was you're competing against large countries, large economies for control over resources. And so it's kind of happening now again. And what could also happen, especially with the machines today, is crazier experiments. Computers and stuff. So maybe that's why I included that. Um, yeah, so, you know, go to the moon, that's a... That's the thing everybody's saying, like, this crypto is going to the moon, maybe this NFT is going to the moon. And uh, when I first did the take, I was like, kind of zoomed in. I think this was blurry because I had it on auto area focus. This was in focus. It's almost like the, the Nikon was telling me something. Like, we should colonize Venus instead. Then I switched it up again. I'll, 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 that's a cool idea. I'll keep this in shot. I'll keep, and focus on the moon and again I just thought of this seemingly like last minute and I had to put it in but overall I'd say it kind of distracts from the real point of the video the point of the whole video was just promoting my grand my great aunt and my grandfather's art and uh, yeah I'm gonna probably make a better video just to focus on this um, put this on Bitcoin I don't know, maybe we'll can see. I gotta really figure out like, is there um, worth maybe just putting this on OpenSea, 100 megabytes, get a full resolution, and then put like another like, maybe even directly figure out how to direct without an exchange, put these on Bitcoin. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still in the process of learning all that. Um, I definitely missed the mark though. Rushed through it. This was stupid. I mean, it was kind of funny, but it was stupid. Again, it distracted from this, the whole point. Um, this was, it definitely kind of was distracting, but it definitely goes with the title. Overall, it probably was distracting from the whole point of the video was this art. Um, but nothing I mean yeah I learned and uh, I thought I kind of like applied everything I've learned to with learned a little about Stanley Krubik when I first moved to New York um, and that was yeah another thing like movies today like movies then making shows and TV you have to be in the union or you have to well, back then, like, 80s, yeah, you yeah. have your own camera equipment, but nowadays, everybody's got a camera, everybody's got, you can get a mic, make your own movies, so it's a little different, um, but wow, there's there's so much I could, stories I could tell, I could have to write a script, write something, um, or just video, interviewing my great aunt who's still alive, uh, 
Eva and my dad, what he remembers about her. Um, and just more stories about my grandfather. This is a cool picture. I never even saw this. Oh, it's crazy. It looks like my brother, too. My young brother. Um, but this is the focus. I've got a lot of great art. And, you know, I'll probably put this on IPFS without selling it. Maybe not, though. I definitely want to promote it, put it on, I don't know, some kind of marketplace, maybe OpenSea. We'll see what happens. But everything's going on, regulation here and there. Um, but that's it. That's uh, the commentary. I got nothing else to say. I mean, talk about a long comment. This is a five-minute video. I got an hour-long, hour-and-a-half-long commentary. When I watch movies, I don't remember the commentary being five minutes, six, 12, 18 times longer than the actual video. That's crazy. I gotta, gotta focus a little bit better. But I, I, I enjoyed this because it brings back memories too about watching old movies and commentaries and clears things up, what I was thinking. And I like this kind of format, kind of reviewing my video after I've done it publicly and oh i like this too the dislike button um i i don't know why they did this um as a little insight though i've watched a lot of youtube videos and i've never disliked a video um so this will be my first dislike and uh I like the intention, but I just didn't like the video. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna like the dislike button because liking the dislike button, I guess, sends them. That means you disliked it. If you dislike the dislike button, I don't know what that means. So, but uh, the fact that you can't see the dislikes, talk about YouTube gearing towards more children. I don't know what the point. This is gearing towards more scammers. Back when I used to watch a video, I could tell if it was fake, full of shit, bad, or maybe it's just a large group of people didn't like it. You'd see the red bar. You see, oh, okay, this video. And then Amy, I could skim through it myself and see what I thought about it. And I go, oh, but with scammers, with NFTs, with cryptocurrency today, it's making it a lot tougher. If you don't see how many people dislike the video, it's actually almost promoting scammers. YouTube is, but uh, that's the world I'm living in. So, not the best video. I can do better. Um, that's it. Okay. Oh, forgot. Um, I'll read through this a little bit. Um, point of the video. This took a while to like. I was gonna put a whole backstory of my great aunt and grandfather, but again, okay. The point of the video to market attention funding family best art. I feel like putting in also the energy of this value. Michael and Iota. Yeah, this is a great video to watch. Um, about NFT tokenomics and how most NFT projects don't understand an economy. I'm not sure if I understand one yet. Um, Japan Ducks auction. Yeah, that's basically it. I don't want to forget. Um, but, uh, all right. Yeah. Thank you. If you watch this whole thing, then wow, thank you.